What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, James Gunn, and Peter Saffron came in here to do a job. And the only way to do their job is to make their mark from scratch. What do you think, Brian, um, about the backlash that James Gunn is getting? We knew this was going to happen. But what do you think is going through James Gunn's mind as as, as this is, is going to continue for quite some time, Brian? This is going to continue all the way up to the first release of their universe. What do you what do you think he's thinking? I can tell you what I'm thinking. <laughs> the backlash tells me he's on the right track. Of course. That's what it tells me. Because let's be straight. The most vocal component of the DC fan base has not gotten the bills paid for this studio call it for what it is yeah if this fan base was backing with their dollars billion dollar projects 1.5 billion dollar justice league projects we ain't having this conversation yeah the reason we're here is because these people are passionate about a certain portrayal of a character but there clearly aren't enough of them or enough of an audience beyond them to make these movies profitable to the level they need to be. Which means if there's one segment of the overall audience you should want to piss off, it's this one. Yeah. That's how I see it. Yeah. So what James Gunn is doing, and we talked about it, there's a lot of articles being like, oh, fire James Gunn, and like he's burning bridges and blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. I think WB is actually playing this a little smarter than people realize. Oh, yeah. He's he's the front man for the band. He's a social media guy. He's out there taking heat. He's out there throwing punches. But let's be straight. Like, we haven't heard a peep out of Peter Saffron. Why? Because he's a producer. His whole gig is relationships. His whole gig is operational. Yeah. He's not going to pop up on Twitter. That's James Gunn's role. It's part of his role. He knew it when he signed up. It probably was part of his pitch, honestly. Yeah. It's his yeah. Look, you guys need... You guys need to be in the consciousness every day for these projects to work. Wow. I can do that. Look at my track record. And I think Zaslav is looming behind this. It's it's kind of gotten him out of the news, which I think is a good thing because he was taking some serious heat with yeah. what he was doing to the catalog. Yeah. So very conveniently, James Gunn is like, I'm going to step in front and take all the cannon fire. But Zaslav's behind the scenes with the checkbook and, you know, I think he had a little more to do with this than people realize. And it's a point I have not seen made anywhere, but I, I want to circle back to it. But listen, the backlash was to be expected. For some people are, and this is not exclusive to the DC universe, but it is weird in the sense that I, you raise this point with Henry Cavill. We have nothing against Henry Cavill. We think there's great potential in Henry Cavill. Yeah, but for man. some reason, people treat the DC portrayals as if they're like untouchable, and they're just not. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, there's been good performances, but like, I, I just go back to always think about like when Nicholson did the Joker, and people were like, "Wow, Jack and Nicholson is a Joker." I didn't think about the Joker that way. He got nominated for an Oscar, and like, mm -hmm. it's not clearly not the comics accurate Joker, but in the moment, people are like, "Nobody could outdo Jack as a Joker." Yeah, and then Heath Ledger got cast, and people were like, "What? Chris Nolan has lost his mind. This guy had he can't possibly do it." What are they saying now about Heath Ledger as he's up in heaven watching now? One of the greatest the performances I've ever seen. That's, yeah, that's the gold performance. Yeah. Without him, that well, movie doesn't work. No. So <laughs> my message to people on this is: settle down, and Chill, get yo. over it. I mean, I I know all of us want the same thing as for the DCU to be on par and perhaps beyond what Marvel has done. Because in the comics, that's the way it kind of was, right, Brian? What DC was like, it. Yeah. And the reverse has happened. I've been trying to explain that to my daughter because she's obviously grown up in a post-MC world. And so I have to explain to her, I'm like, you know, before all this started, Batman, Superman, what these were the like if you I said if you walk down I tell her if you walk down the street around the world more people just casually know Batman and know Superman versus Iron Man 
or Thor. The only reason those characters have been elevated into the consciousness now is because the MCU was so successful. But that was not true when that yeah. started. No. I'll take any Batman project over any MCU project any day of the week. We have been gifted the talents of Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, Robert Pattinson, Ben Affleck, the voice work of the late Kevin Conroy. That character more than any other has proved to me that life goes on and there's many ways to play that character at different ages and different styles and you can have love for all of them. You know, I talked about the two Jokers. We didn't even talk about the Joker that won an Oscar, for God's yeah. sake, and Joaquin. Yeah. So again, three versions of an of a classic character that all have room to live in history. And people, for some reason, are hung up on, I can't have another Superman except Henry Cavill. I can't have another. Come on. Come on, man. That's 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 like way overboard. <laughs> That's 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 just like, come on, man. How can we reason? How can we talk if you're so absolute on one thing happening? And if it doesn't happen, uproar? Really? Uproar? Right? I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. I honestly don't know how he finds time to do this on top of writing the Superman movie, on top of organizing this universe. But he does find time to go on social media. And he writes, quote, one of the things Peter, meaning Saffron, and I were aware of when we took the job as heads of DC Studios was a certain minority of people online that could be, well, uproarious and unkind, to say the least. No one loves to be harassed or called names, but to be frank, we've been through significantly worse. Disrespectful outcry will never, ever affect our actions which is code for get over it. <laughs> I'm digging in, and the louder you guys squawk, the less likely I am to listen. It's over. It's over. Let it be what it was. Enjoy for what it is. It's over. I mean, Ray Fisher came out of the woodwork to take shots at James Gunn because James Gunn had supported or had liked a tweet that someone else had made in support of Joss Whedon. And then Ray Fisher's like, oh, he deleted the tweet. To which James Gunn clapped back, all of my tweets automatically delete, not just the ones to you, Ray. I was like, oh my God, like, are we here? Are we really doing this? Ray, sit down, read some scripts, audition, do something, yo. He's in what Rebel Moon for Zack Snyder. I'm excited to see that film. Enjoy Talk about it. Rebel Moon, yo. Talk about that. That looks pretty dope. <laughs> Zack Snyder is creating this world that looks pretty dope. And, and when you think about, and I hope we can, you and I can uh, do a show uh, on, this is a movie, correct? Yeah, it's like a two-part, like, four-hour type of film. Okay. Um, hey, if this everything we're hearing about it, and it certainly it's going to look fantastic, so I'm very much looking forward very to that. Much. And you're in that. And you're in that, and you're talking, and you want to bring attention to yourself with that, yo? He got absolutely wrong in the, in, in the Zack Snyder Justice. Oh, yeah. We gave him best performance for the Snyder Cut, because he... I don't know what happened. It does that whole thing stinks, and I yeah, totally yeah. agree with him. Yeah, yeah. But like coming after coming after the new regime and carrying that over, it just I don't. It's, it's, it's over, just, man. Yeah. Move on. Move on. Move on. Dog. They moved on. Like yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, all those people are gone. That's what I don't understand. Like all the people that he outed and called to task have been fired at this point. That's, that's so. I, I don't. I don't get it now. Let me se let me segue this conversation to something that I've been stewing over that no one's talked about because James Gunn put out one other tweet, right. which was as we said the original articles portrayed it as he and Peter Saffron axed Wonder Woman. Later articles basically confirmed they did not have much to do with the end of Wonder Woman three. That was kind of between Patty Jenkins and Michael DeLuca, but then it came word well James Gunn wants to fire every cast member except Margot Robbie, including, and got rid of Gal Gadot. To which he kind of gives a very cryptic quote. Yeah. And this is what got me thinking about this other thing I want to talk to you about. He said, okay. quote, I'm not, this is in response to a fan. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where you're getting that we, quote, booted Gal, end quote. Mm -hmm. So that, on the one hand, sounds to me, Pablo, like Gal is gone. Yeah. But he's yeah. just saying, we didn't fire her. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
which brought me back to the report that she was set to make 20 million base salary for Wonder Woman 3. Mm -hmm. You said this a few, a few episodes ago. I think there is an underrated angle here, which is a business angle that people need to be thinking about. And I haven't seen mentioned, um, which is Warner Brothers is hemorrhaging cash. The stock is under $10. They're highly levered. David Zaslav's under a ton of pressure to cut costs as fast as possible. Practically speaking, if you were to run it back with Dwayne Johnson, Gal Gadot, Henry Cavill, Jason Momoa, Ben Affleck, at their current rates, those are all actors in those parts that are probably commanding 10, 20, 30 million dollars each yeah. for those roles. Yeah. When I hear James Gunn say, I want to do a young Superman, I think that's an interesting story. But you know what that also is? It's cheaper. Because <laughs> if you go get a 25 or 27 year old actor who's on the rise, but is not proven, you get the equivalent of Henry Cavill 12 years ago. You get the equivalent of Christopher Reeve back in the day. You get Chris Evans, who was paid, by the way, 600000 not million, $600,000 yeah. when he signed to be Captain America. When you get that, your budgets come down really fast without sacrificing visual quality. I think David Zaslav was also in this room saying, listen, guys, I don't care what you come up with. We got to get these budgets down. That Black Adam thing was a disaster. <laughs> we cannot... And I'm serious, like we cannot be green lighting $200 million where the top two or three build actors are taking 50 million of them. Absolutely not. And quite honestly, if we are trying to replicate some of the MCU's greatness, this was one of the things they were able to do, right? And Absolutely. James Gunn in particular, Chris Pratt, no better example of a guy who became an A-list star out of being a TV supporting character at a bargain basement rate when he became Star-Lord. Yeah. Brian, I've, I've said for years now, ever since I got behind the mic with Eggheads, and I've said it ever since, find those new guys, man. That's what I'm saying. You can still spend $100 million on VFX and practical sets. You just spend one-tenth of what you're spending on the cast because so part of the subplot to this is something you and i have alluded to which is you know when chris evans and chris hemsworth were getting signed the superhero genre wasn't a thing yeah a-listers weren't lining up to do these movies but now all everybody over wants that bag more money more money more money so <laughs> all these people with a brand or a quasi brand or a social <laughs> media following want to get paid up front to front a superhero movie and that's just not a reliable model for this genre it's not mm. like tom cruise can do that for mission impossible and top gun he's been around for 40 years he can do that there's not many and honestly we we crack on dwayne johnson a lot outside of this genre dwayne johnson can do that you pay him 20 million dollars red notice is the most even though that movie is whatever <laughs> it's the most watched movie on netflix it works the model for him works yeah 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 but in this genre there's a much better hit rate if you go a little bit unknown have the person become i gotta borrow quentin tarantino here they become famous because of the character the character don't become famous because of them yeah and that works better for yeah. these movies yeah yeah brian you laid it all out beautifully um i don't really have to um share my thoughts because you laid it out very very um logistically uh in a way that makes sense and that has to be done and james gunn has the experience yo what did you say brian what did you say Whoever they put in charge is going to be from the MCU. That's true. I did say it was a parliament guy. I was wrong about that, but it was an MCU, MCU guy. guy. And, 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 and here it is. And here it is. By the yeah. way, have you seen that conspiracy theory that like Kevin Feige sent James Gunn to the DC universe to destroy it? <laughs> That's also floating around. And he's a plant. He's a mole. 
Oh man, I, I'm pretty sure Kevin Feige wants James Gunn to succeed, man. I'm, he does. I, I, yeah, yeah. He absolutely because here's the thing: Kevin Feige knows more than anyone else. You know what helps the box office for his next movie is if DC's next movie is big. Of course, that's the reality of this business. And it's competition, and competition does what makes you better. It makes you compete. It makes you want to outdo. And that's and who who who. Um, I guess, uh, receives the fruit of that competition. Us. Yes. It's WCW and WWF at the height of their powers. You want two organizations bringing their A game, not one. Take my money, Brian. Take it. I'm there. If you're going to, if I'm, if you're going to entertain me and help me escape all this is going on for an hour, two, three hours. And it's dope. And that's what James Gunn, Gun, he wants to take our money, but he wants to give us something for our money. The 2024 movies ramp up. Watch for leaks and reports of what these budgets are. I am betting they are 150 and under. And I'm betting you're going to see leads that are more comparable to what MCU leads were, or quite honestly, what Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot were when they originally got these parts, which is lesser known characters at cheaper rates i i, I think that's going to be a pattern here and i honestly that's, think it's better odds we're going to get better films because of it i'm going to guess from 100 125 depending on the character mm -hmm. but think about it if you budget at that level 400 million a box office you making money and quite yeah. honestly even if you just do okay like we want a great <laughs> listen if we get a great superman movie budgeted at 125 it's making 750 it's making more it's, than that it's, yeah but, but i think from zaslaw's perspective he needs to look at it as if we only get like a b minus version of these films i can't be losing 100 million dollars a pop so a superman movie a batman movie that's only average that will suck for us mm -hmm. but it won't suck for them as a studio if the budgets are lower that's just mon money monetary reality. And I think no one's talking about that. And I think that's a big, big, big consideration. here. Anything else to say about Black Adam, Brian, before we wrap this one up? <laughs> As I said, James Gunn still has not, he has all the things he's tweeted. He has not tweeted Dwayne Johnson's name, but there was a tweet regarding mm -hmm. Black Adam where he just said, everything involved with black adam happened before i got in the seat end <laughs> quote he just wiped his hands of that entire train wreck and yo james gunn I, I, you gotta respect the dude i may not be in tune with his humor and stuff like that but in terms of the creative direction he, he does a dope job visually he, he's he's a it's a great director, but I'm not just, I, I just can't get into some of his humor. Um, it worked for some, some things that he's done and, and, um, but not for others, but we'll see. Well, that's uh, how you know that for us, this is an honest take, because if you yeah. follow this show, you know that we have generally been on the other side of his content in the last couple of years. Yeah. But we're riding with James Gunn right now. Oh, hell's yeah. Hell's yeah, because we know a change is coming. And it's and it's, and it's starting in 2024, right? Really? Yeah, it's starting. To, but the news flow is definitely going to start in the next. I think you're right. I think it's Comic-Con next summer. is And then and then they're not doing um, Fandom, but I'm guessing they'll come up with some something to kind of they're going to be people excited when he's ready to show something. James Gunn grew up with San Diego Comic Con. He's going to go to the stomping grounds to get who on board? These these haters. He's going to get them on board when he shows them what he has in store for them, man. That's the only way to do it. It's not to alienate them and, and, and you know he don't want to start that. He wants to include he wants everybody to enjoy the DC what what I mean by what we've been waiting for been waiting for this to be it to for these characters to come alive the way we wanted them to come and it hasn't happened because you had people who came in there and wanted to do their own thing put their mark on that on the dc ip and now he's james is speaking poetry in my in my view yeah, i agree i agree and like we're we're, we're st we i think we're officially starting the rumor mode because we floated this jacob alordi thing and i texted you today i was like 
Oh, that's right. He's the supporting character on Euphoria, the number one show on Warner Brothers at HBO Max. He's already in the studio fold. 25 years old, six foot five, dark hair. You put a little muscle on that guy. He and... can definitely play your young Clark Kent, and he's already hot because of that TV show. I don't know, man. That's just floating it. It just makes sense. Did you see John Campion's list? I did. And it was like typical. Typical stuff. The problem is I think a lot of the typical names out there, honestly, are too old. Yeah. Or it, it's like, I, you know, I've seen like Chalamet on, he's not doing it. He's already said he, he just yeah. won't do superhero stuff. And it's like, so again, it's somewhere in between. It's somewhere between, you know, 23 and 31, I think is the, is the age range. And it, yeah, it's going to be somebody who has a social media following, has been a number two or three person in a TV show or, uh, you know, did a supporting role in a film somewhere, but, you know, got some acclaim for it. That, that's, the, that's the kind of person you're going to get doing that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the backlash James Gunn is having and how he's handling it. He's handling it wonderfully. Uh, Brian, Ray Fisher needs to just concentrate on his career, man. If, honestly, it was like, yo, that's it, man. That's, it's over. Gal Gadot... She's out. That's what I think. I think that's what James Gunn's tweet is saying, is that she's out, but they didn't fire her, which might leave some sliver of hope that she comes back, but it ain't going to be for $20 million. That's the other way to read that tweet. I think, Brian, if Gal Gadot wants to do it, she should do it for less money, and more importantly, she'll do it for the fans. If that's her, if that's if those are her two reasons for doing it, then hooray, let's get it going. And Black Adam is, let us know what you guys think. Are you tired of hearing? Are you looking? And this one interesting thing, Brian. I don't know if you saw uh, uh, the Rock, the Rock's um, tweet. Did you the see follow, that? The follow, unfollow? Yeah. No, 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 no. Him responding to uh, or talking about the James Gunn situation. You didn't see that? Oh, I don't think I saw. I saw the one about say where people were like, he unfollowed the WB and Black Yeah, Adam, yeah, yeah. I yeah, never yeah. followed it in the first place. That I saw. He says, and I quote, my passionate friends, I wanted to give you a long awaited Black Adam update regarding the character's future in the new DC universe. She began a statement. James Gunn and I connected and Black Adam will not be in their first chapter of storytelling. However, DC and Seven Bucks have agreed to continue exploring the most valuable ways Black Adam can be utilized in future DC multiverse chapters. James and I have known each other for years and have always rooted for each other to succeed. It's no different now and I will always root for DC and Marvel to win and win big. You guys know me. I have a very thick skin. I sort of, I, I, I'm, the first time I read it, I thought it said thin, but he <laughs> said, you know, I, I'm super uh, thick skin. And you can always count on me to be direct with my words. These decisions made by James and DC leadership represent their vision of DCU through their creative lens. Um, after 15 years of relentless hard work to finally make Black Adam, I'm very proud of the film we delivered for, for fans worldwide. I will always look back on the fan reaction to Black Adam with tremendous gratitude, humility, and love. We did great to my very passionate and vocal Black Adam superhero genre fans. I love you. Thank you. And I will always listen to you and do my best to deliver and entertain you. What a hell of a month. And now we all need to, we now we all need some terra mana. Uh, have a productive weekend and happy holidays to you and your families. DJ, he concluded. Okay. And we'll we'll wrap up after that. Brian, this is just him being the politically correct guy. And so, oh, sure. yeah. He lost. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And like, I can, I mean, I can translate that entire thing to he got benched. <laughs> That's yeah. what, what else do we need to know? He said, we're not at the next chapter. I'm not in the next chapter. You got benched. Yeah. We'll see. Listen, Black Adam is part of the DC universe. And I'm sure we'll see Black Adam again, but The Rock won't be the guy playing it. So that's, I think, I think you hit on it, which is this goes, I think this is another thing that we're, we're going to be dead right on, which is to me, the conversation that was had when something along the lines of 
you're not in the next chapter at all. If we bring you, if we bring the character back, you're going to play it on our terms. And if you don't want to play it on our terms, we own the rights to the character. You don't. Woo! I mean, and and the other part of this too is like, listen, I mean, the 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 the, the, the rock is certainly outrunning Father Time, but he's also 50 years old. So if he's not in the next chapter and that chapter spans 10 years, I mean, the rock in his sixties, come on, we're pushing it as, as strong as he is. And as young as he looks, we're pushing it. So don't tell me that James Gunn isn't aware of that. And the yeah. studio is not aware of that. They're buying time. And Dwayne Johnson's super duper expensive, like as he should be, but I'm just saying like this to me feels like the rock trying to exit stage left gracefully. So that when the chapter after the chapter comes around and he's not playing the character and the character's still not on back on screen, they can kind of make it a mutual parting of ways. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. That's the that's 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 a game over for Hawkman, Adam Smasher, Cyclone, all those spin-offs they already had planned. That tweet is also a that's <laughs> hear that sound um. <laughs> over hey i wish michael uh no no centineo no centineo yeah centineo um i don't know if you're watching brian the recruit no i've heard i, I know about the show i haven't watched yeah, yeah, yeah. it it's pretty dope it's pretty dope okay. I mean, I, he, he's pretty good he's a he's he's good he's entertaining to watch and i hope i think he's gonna have a hell of a time um it, it, with his career he he looks like um an up-and-coming star it's unfortunate for aldous hodge um but he played the character like i was afraid he was gonna play the character yeah and i'm sure he'll find some other he's young he's still you know black don't crack and he's gonna do something dope so it's whatever hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell we thank you for listening to our shows I know we go deep, but, you know, we're trying to figure out what's going to happen. We're trying to dig into the minds of the people behind the scenes and what sort of conversations are happening. We're sort of giving you an inside look without even working there. And as you can see, if you watch the news and, 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 and if you watch our show, too bad, Brian, it's really too bad. I wish, I'm hoping to uh, do more live shows. So, you know, we're ahead of the game instead of being right on top of it because we talk about this stuff for a long time before the new stuff come out yeah that's and funny. so uh i want to be on top of it but so so that you guys see that you know um there's a lot that goes in we want to see the superhero genre continue and the way things have been going brian is it, 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 there's a lot of concern but so far i think i think we're we we're, we're, we're coming in on that 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 the bottom and now we're coming back we're coming in from the rock <laughs> 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 we'll see you next time on the nerd gem report <laughs> <laughs>